Yeah. Start off crazy yelling. It's me, Real D Dub C, aka David Carroll. I'm here with my other host, my better half. Hey. <laughs> That's it. That's all you got. What's up? <laughs> wake, wake up, man. It's game uh, time. Uh, I don't know about you, man, but all day I've been pumped for this. Like, I feel electricity. I feel big things. You pumped? I'm pretty pumped. If I were more pumped, I'd be, I don't know. So, you more than I, you keep in touch with a lot of our past guests. Yeah, yeah. You, you end up building, like, some friendships. I think it's important because, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's cool. You know, it's not like a bad breakup. You don't say goodbye. You know? <laughs> I still I still text all my ex-girlfriends. Is that real talk? No. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but, like, you do keep in touch with these guys. You guys know what's going on in each other's like, yeah. Because you know. um, a lot of them are actually pretty cool. If uh, you know, on Facebook, it's it's pretty easy to see what everyone's doing. It's not like Twitter. Yeah, but I mean, like you guys still like, you know, I see that you talk to some of them and they, you know, congratulate them and vice versa on what what's going on. Yeah, they're competing and stuff. So I think that's really that's cool, man. I don't have Facebook to keep in touch with people though. So, but I'm getting at, I'm leading into this is that we have uh. A returning guest, the second time it's happened in uh, our brief history on BJ Jack Radio, uh, Mr. Zach Adamson. Yep. I'm pumped to talk to him. We won't break the news. We'll let him break some big news. He's got huge news, actually. How, how big? Well, Pretty you're the one, that, you're the one that's told me, man. So <laughs> I think it's huge. Yeah. I mean, if you're a, a geek, if you're a nerd, if, you're, if you know what's popping, what's going on in the, the BJJ scene lately, I think it's big news. Uh, it's very big news. It's I think it would help him uh, with, you know, exposure. Um, yeah, man. And we also got uh, the guest on before that. Our first guest will be Marco Machado. He's out in uh, Cali. I love that place. Yeah, man. So uh, Our friend, uh, our friend uh, Marcos Terragrosa is there. Just name dropping. He's so popular. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I wonder how much better it is to wake up to palm trees and beautiful weather and go train opposed to waking up in this well, minus 40 shit. We can't complain because it's like plus three today and it's in the middle of February. So, oh, wait, it's almost, <clears throat> it's almost March. So, um, with that being said, I believe tonight we have a forecast of 20 centimeters of snow. So, it, let's enjoy that. Really? Yeah. I'm not one to complain about weather. I'm just saying, like, it must be nice to wake up to palm trees. Bullshit. Yeah. So, uh, over the weekend, I'll let uh, the uh, seven listeners we got out there right now live, all (laughs) seven of them, three of them are making something in the kitchen, Uh, two of them went to the washroom, so all two listeners right now. (laughs) I'm joking. There's probably more out there. I never get to see, so I'm pumped, but I know we have people listening after. I'm rambling on, guys. I know, but... Uh, this weekend, man, I actually was at the uh, Hybrid Combat Promotions. They do uh, amateur MMA out here in the Ottawa, Yadno area. And um, I was a judge, a uh, ringside judge. Like, I judged MMA fights. Yeah, it was pretty sick. Yeah, man. It, it was large. You don't know. I had to get dapper, look look fresh, all black. Like, I looked like I was uh, either, like, a, w- working at a nightclub or I was going to a funeral, like, dressed in all black. Men in black. Yeah, I look like the MIB. I was I, I wasn't quick enough to pull a joke, so I just stalled. You ever do that? Yeah, yeah of course. You ever? You don't know the answer, so you repeat. Um. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, but at least that way you give time to think. Yeah, yeah. If you're good at talking while thinking, it's hard to do. But I used to freestyle a lot. Yeah. I used to spit right off the dome, so I would keep spitting while thinking of the next line. Hmm. Yeah. Should do a sample. One of these days for uh, for our show. Yeah, yeah, maybe one day I'll just get up and just tear it up. Should do like a, a jujitsu. The only song. thing is, I get really aggressive and I I bark a lot, like DMX, when I run out <laughs> of things. I just start barking. I go crazy. Yeah, I sound like a humane society. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I judged some fights. You know, uh, a lot of finishes, um, but we had four four calls, and uh, I think all of us. Uh, Made the right calls. How'd you, how'd you uh, get into that gig anyways? Oh, man, without giving away the secrets of how the world really works, 
no, I, I was given a call up yeah. and, uh, um, you know, I, I was asked, uh, if I, wa- I wanted to try out the gig, uh, supposedly there has been some pretty, pretty gnarly calls, uh, going on in the scene. Like, uh, yeah. you know, who they know type of thing. So people are trying to be biased, right? It's an amateur sport and these mm-hmm. judges don't get paid, so they don't care as much. And. They don't care what the amateur record is for a kid. Yeah, and, you know it's getting kind of it was getting out of control. So I guess they made some changes. And you know I wasn't originally asked even to do it. Uh, somebody double scheduled and just pulled the kind of a no show. Yeah. So I got the call up, and uh, you know I said, "Hey, how much does it pay?" And because uh, I'm all business, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I heard the answer, which was the answer to everything I do in life, which was. Uh, it's pro bono, and I said, "Hey, I'm not, I'm not into having sex." Man. <laughs> and they said, "Dave, that means it's free." And I said, oh, "Okay, well, then I'll do it." <laughs> so, you know, but it, it was cool because you know everyone there. Once you get up, and it, the, the fight community is so goddamn small. You find, uh, do you find that when you watch the fight, it's different? You're standing in a different view, <sighs> well, as opposed to being a regular spectator. Absolutely, because you know I've been to so many events. You kind of like sometimes you just don't pay attention, man. No matter how much you love fighting, sometimes you're just like, "Hey, what the hell is that girl wearing?" Or, "What's up with this guy's boots?" You know, you get sidetracked. But yeah. there, I really try to look at it from, "Hey, I don't know these two people in the cage, and I'm looking for specific things." Yeah, and that is who's hitting more. In a way, I was trying to pretend like I was the the fight metric or whatever the the people that I think I'm counting punches. I'm looking yeah. for kicks landed, power shots, yeah. ring control. So, yeah, I was hyper-focused on that, my friend. So I did look at the fights a little bit differently. And uh, overall, it was a good experience, man. But, you know, I, I, I got chosen, though, because uh, obviously I've been around uh, enough of the, the sport and know a lot of the, the people. And, yeah. you know, you know, I haven't tarnished my reputation yet, not just quite yet. I still have a couple bridges left that I could burn. <laughs> so, yeah, it was cool, man. I was actually really, really excited to do it. So, Did you find the, the UFC fight? Did you watch any of it? That was you know, I, of course, I caught, I caught the uh, – by the time that ended, I, I believe the henderson Machida fight was on. And yeah. from, my, from my understanding, uh, I missed nothing. <laughs> like you and me have fought more <laughs> right now. Yeah. But I did see uh, Ronda's armbar. Yeah, that was uh... – And uh, my hat goes off to her and, you know, I'm sure a lot of people were blah, blah, blah. But, you know, typical UFC hype train. Uh, they made it seem like it was a fucking spectacle of a fight. Uh, the girl still got armbarred in the first round. She didn't prove shit. I'm sorry, people. Uh, you know what I'm saying though, yeah. right? Like if this was a uh, any other fight and the guy went out there and they – yeah, she almost took her back. But, yeah. you know – how many things happened in a regular fight? She went out and got armbar in four minutes, and uh, she lost. And you know, I'm I'm glad it launched the women's MMA. I'm all for that. Yeah. I'm a huge Ronda fan, but you know, don't try to sell me something it ain't. So that's well, all. <laughs> I feel bad for all the the pay per view people. It was uh, what do you call? <laughs> what was I gonna say? It was uh, yeah. I feel bad for the pay per view uh, the people that purchased like. Because like they're they're watching the main fight, but you know it, it only happens, for, or the fight lasts like one round. So you're, you know, all that money goes to the five minutes of. Dude, I used to pay sixty, sixty five, and anybody who's an eighties guy or an eighties baby or you know grew up in the eighties, they know what I'm talking about. When you spent sixty, seventy bucks on a goddamn Tyson fight in the last sixty seconds, yeah. and you didn't know anybody else on the whole fight card, you just tuned in for only Tyson. So. Yeah. You know, MMA events, at least you had four of the fights. Faber put it on, from what I hear. There was a, you know, the main card was good, other than uh, supposedly the Henderson Machida fight. I don't understand why people complain about the Machida fight, anyways. Everybody knows how Machida fights. People complain all the time that, oh, Machida. Yeah, but Machida fought like that. Then he switched it up a bit and he Mm -hmm. put Bader to sleep, and people are all like, oh, that's the Machida. He's changed. Yeah. And he went back to, you know, he got the W, he's got the title shot. Everyone could suck his balls. I mean, then again, like, does he have the title shot? Well, that's what Dana White said. But, you know, 
that's what Dana White said. Yeah. I could say that again 20 different ways and people know what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. Dana White says things like he's in the mix. Uh, yeah. He's next in line. It, it, it's a constant F you to the people. So yeah. then again, like you wouldn't fight balls out on someone like Henderson who could finish you in one punch, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know if you noticed, but like Dan Henderson, you know, when he knocks somebody down and he's running towards him. Yeah. He looks weird. <laughs> like I want to put a side by side footage of uh I don't know if you ever watched the Flintstones back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like uh, when Fred Flintstone went bowling. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like on his tippy toes, like it kind of looks like that. Yeah. And uh, I'm showing my age once again. So, you know, <laughs> I just realized today yeah, I'm 28 years old and I've actually lived, uh, this is the fourth decade I've lived on. It's pretty wow. cool, eh? I've been in the 80s, the 90s, the 20s, and uh, yes. now I'm on the 2010s. So, I was in the 90s. So, what, what am I? Well, all of a sudden, it'd be three decades then. Damn, bro. Yeah. I'm like 22. Yeah. So, uh, man, I heard This Is Why I'm Hot by Mims, and the, the song is still stuck in my head. It's been three hours. All I keep saying is This Is Why I'm Hot. So, uh, guys, go go to our uh, Facebook. Uh, it's BJJ Addict uh, and BJJ Addict Radio. And uh, go check out Fight Fans Radio on Facebook. But right now, go to uh, the BJJ Attic one and go answer the question if you think wrist locks are uh, good or bad or garbage or, as uh, Jeroel says here, uh, douche moves. Um, it's supposed to be move. Yeah, yeah, but it's funnier douche moves because you know there's a, a couple more that you would add to that list. So yeah. uh, we're getting sidetracked, bro. This is Ronda Rousey. We could talk a whole hour on this amazing chick. Uh, man, that uh, she's... She's wicked. She is amazing, and I'm excited to see all her other fights. And uh, all right, all right. Let's, let's call up uh, let's call up the man Marco Machado. What a what a heavy last name to have in BJJ. Machado, yeah. Oh my God. Is he related to the Machados? Man, let's ask him. I don't think he is. Why do we both stop talking the same for? time? Yo, I got a kick out of how much uh, Carmouche looked like favor though. Yeah, did you see my Facebook? Uh, Status? No, what'd you say? I was like, uh, man, I can't remember. Something about your eye favor looks like Carmooch. Yeah, definitely. I feel bad for Carmooch, though. I think. There's nothing to feel bad about her. She's going to be rich. Yeah, but it could be downhill. Yeah, it's never downhill, and you know it. Oh, the phone is ringing, folks. Please leave your message for. Oh, whoa, whoa. Has he been getting tips from Samir how to do a radio interview? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I talked to him after and he was just, uh, he really. Apologetic? Yeah, he was apologetic, you know, but it is what it is. He came straight from Brazil that day, so. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll let it slide. And now, you know, I said, hey, man, just come on next week. But, you know, he's already, I think he's in Switzerland now or something or Sweden, so. Uh, busy, busy. It must be nice being a top level athlete. Uh, yeah, man. Huh? Yeah, hit him, Marco. Marco? Yeah, man. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So we're just gonna hit up Marco there, folks, and uh, tell him to answer his phone. Some of these guys, you know, if they're anything like us, uh, before the show, me and me and Jerry are, you know, updating our statuses and and throwing questions and and getting the buzz ready for us to be on the radio show again and. You know, every so often we'll look up and be like, where the hell did the last 20 minutes go, man? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, his name keeps popping up lately, but he keeps doing some big things. But uh, the the man, uh, Darson Hemmings, he's invited to the next BJJ Kumite. Really? Yeah, he's in it. Oh, wow. It's pretty good. So, you know, you got a lot of fan support, you know. You can't just walk in and, and apply to it. You know, like you could apply, but like chances are you won't get in, but... If other people also create a little buzz for you, it, it helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so he's in that. So the next one's a lightweight. Good. Yeah, man. I'd rather watch lightweights personally. Not to be biased, uh, but to totally be biased. You dig? I do dig. Hey, I have a, I have a story for you, actually. Okay, let me in. Well, I kind of started taking poetry classes. I don't know if I told you that. No, never. But here's – here's because you said dig. and uh, Yeah. Anyways, uh, I'm going to recite one for you. Mm -hmm. You dig? Yeah. I dig? Mm -hmm. 
My sister digs. Yeah. My mom digs. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a very good poem, but it is pretty deep. Ah, ha, 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 ha. All right. Y'all can hate me. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> that, that is... Uh, I want someone to appreciate this. Yes. You know what? The, for every one hater... Wait. For every one appreciator, there's probably 10, 10 hey. people that hate that joke. But you know what? It made me giggle, not on the outside, nor on the inside, <laughs> but somewhere deep down, I giggle. One day you'll laugh at it. Yeah, you know. You know what's funny is like the same people who say like your jokes are dumb, you know, you'll catch them, tell them to somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. That's the point. To give that little giggle. Yeah. As long as you don't wiggle while you giggle, especially if you're male, then everything is all good. Speaking of fights, man, Faber might get another title shot again soon. How, <laughs> how, how messed up is that division that uh, it's just Faber? <laughs> Name one other person that's been at the top of a, a weight class for a decade. He is like a miniature Randy Couture. Like, only fights, title fights, almost. A lot of money off of that, too, probably. Title the phone's ringing. Too. Please leave your message for... Oh. Awesome. This is awesome. I love it. Yeah. And, you know, I just... It's just us talking, man. I love talking. Yeah, so do I. So, give me something good. San Francisco Open just happened. I beat you, Jeff. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Our Thanks. man, I believe... Uh, I saw I the, the results. I uh, saw the pictures. I yeah. didn't see like the actual post, but our man. Did he? Did he? For sure. I'm pretty sure I saw two golds. Damn. Do you know? Do you know? Well, in I, the San Fran area. I, I believe it's Marcos. Marcos Taragosa. You love his name. It's a good name to, to ring off. The Mendez brothers were there. Oh, they One. Did. They won? Yeah, I mean, they had like a four or five man bracket, so they both won a match and they closed it out probably. Um, ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Andre Galvao was supposed to show up, but Anderson Silva opened up his gym this weekend in oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Torrance, California area, and uh, I guess he took part in that. And I saw I saw some photos of Anderson Silva's friends, and uh, they're all very uh, tough and successful people in the sport. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Go pay a hundred bucks to compete, or go to Anderson Silva's grand opening. And, it's just uh, work. Yeah, I know. Like, I would have chose that too. Yeah. No, no questions asked. Oh my God! This weekend, yes, uh, UFC in Japan. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Brian Stan, uh, Vanderlei Silva. Who you got? Stan is gonna beat the shit out of Silva. Okay, so Vanderlei's gonna win, and when how? <laughs> no, I think Stan is going to win, actually. Do you believe that? I I am putting $2 on Stan beating the crap out of Silva. All right. I'm, I, old, I'm old school. I'm the pride never dies type guy. I'm, I know my peeps are out there and be like, pride fucking rules. Literally. Like, we forget he's been knocked out more than, you know, anybody else lately. But you know what? Uh He's had a strong chin with Rich Franklin, but I don't think Rich hits as hard as Brian Stan. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, like, I think he's washed up anyways. If, Ooh, if harsh, you're, harsh word, bro. <laughs> if you're out there. Harsh. <laughs> harsh. Well, he doesn't even f- compete. Dude, that is the worst W word to call someone. <laughs> washed up. Headlining UFC again. Like, who? Vanderlei. No, no, I wasn't. I, I'm not talking about him being washed up. I'm talking about uh, the other guy. Right. No, the other guy. Rich Franklin. Rich Franklin. Get the front out of here. <laughs> Bro, Shut Rich, the front door. Rich Franklin is not even close to Washington. He doesn't even fight. When was the last time he fought? Kung fight. Lee, and Kung. he got knocked. Oh, yeah. That was a vicious KO. Yeah, yeah. Holy so. shit. That was awesome. Yeah. You know Rich still got it, though. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, we'll see. He's top tier, man. I, I think he's he's, he's got some pretty tough dudes in his right, weight division. Up. Let's pause. Let's pause. Um, Mark Hunt, and uh, I like to say his name like this. Struve. Struve. The, st- the skyscraper. Stefan Struve. Stefan Struve is going to win. I'm one of these pride never die type guys. Like, pride rules. I'm going to go with Mark Hunt. That's such a funny name. Too yeah. bad his name wasn't Mike. 
I agree. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Mike Stroop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but the uh, I'm going for a con. And then of course we got <laughs> we got an amazing fight with uh, the dream. Now he's not even the nightmare. Uh, Diego Sanchez, uh, first fight in almost pretty much a year. Uh, he's fighting Takanori Gomi, the fireball kid. No. Uh, yeah, Go- oh, Gomi, yeah. Who you who you got on this one? The Sanch. <laughs> Did you, dude? Are you drinking tonight? I wish, man. Because you're a goofy. You called him the Sanch. I've never heard his name be called the Sanch. Have you ever walked around like man? People, people are la- getting lazier, man. Yeah, yeah. Why? I don't know. People start like calling like Starbucks the Starbs. People don't complete their sentences. Oh, I, I love that. Man. It's like a recurring, reoccurring trend for our populace. I per, I'm a fan of like kind of annihilating a whole sentence and just saying a yeah. couple words if I can save my breath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know, hit us up. Tell us your uh, tell us your three picks for those fights: the Silva Stand, Hunt Struve, uh, the Sanch, Gomi, <laughs> Diego Sanchez. Because uh, yeah, man, I I just think it would be great if uh, I think Sanchez is gonna just walk through him like ragdoll him around like he's he's gonna sub him for sure whoa what he's sanch is gonna is gonna sub him sub the gomes that's intense uh we also got okami and lombard holy shit sorry and give us that call okami lombard that match is huge i'm going for the okami i also agree you know his is his nickname is you Shin, you know what? Shit, I can't remember. Thunder. Oh, that's it. Okami. He's, it, it doesn't match up to his damn name. Thunder. <laughs> yeah, if anything, he's kind of like a melody. He's just like, uh, you know, you go with it. He doesn't have any thunder. Yeah. It's kind of like a, I don't know. Well, that's a cool picture. Yeah, so you should Thunder Okami. I'm going for Okami also. Yeah. I think Hak the Lombard is still a little bit uh, young. Inflated, over like hyped up. Oh, okay, like yeah. Like I don't, still don't believe he's. I know he had one bad fight, then a good fight, but I don't think he's everything. You know, everyone thinks he is. So that's also. I don't care. People could hate me, man. So, any big news for you coming up? Big news? Uh, no, not right now. Nothing. No secrets. Um, I know you. You got a whole bunch of secrets, and you just don't want to tell me. You'll uh, tell me later. Hey. Oh. It's a good song. What? Who <laughs> sings that, by the way? Uh, the Lumineers. That's pretty good. I uh, started listening to them. Dude, it's actually a super catchy song. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you know what's weird is, I don't know, man. It just. You feel kind of weird admitting it. If you love like the music I love, you shouldn't like the Lumineers. Is there room to like other genres of music? I don't know. Which is funny because am I, I growing up? Is that all it is? Like I, I love rap so much, but how am I loving the, the Lumineers? That song is so catchy. They have some good songs, man. Like I don't know, I don't know about you, but I used to love rap. That's all I'd listen to. Yeah. Like I would never uh, back in the Dizzle be like <laughs> be like. Uh, <laughs> he did not just say the Dizzle. Yeah, like uh, I wouldn't. I would never say like, oh, I would listen to the Lumineers or I don't know some rock band. And now that's like dude, I listen to anything. The worst is like the way I dress still some days, and I'm walking in say the mall. It seems everything takes place in the mall, but you catch a song, and then you you end up you're walking and you start singing it, and then you realize you're singing it, so you try to. Add your own like swag to it a bit, but yeah. you're still singing Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah. Spice Happy Life. Like, I can't, oh, be I used to, I can't be caught singing that. I used to have like the biggest, biggest obsession with Posh Spice, which cost my mom a fortune in Zafron. Because <laughs> 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 Zafron is a very expensive spice, man. <laughs> 
Uh, I believe you meant saffron. Saffron, whatever. Saffron. Saffron. Ah, man. That was a good joke. The joke was the way you said it <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> Horrible. I love it. No, but uh, <laughs> right now, I don't care. Uh, before we call up our other guests, since uh, Marco just got chopped. Good. We'll call him another day. Yeah. This is back to back, though. I hate it. It's yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't know, man. Like, it's hard, you know. We we set them up with people all over the world, so. But I, I went extra cautious after the Samir, and I rewrote numerous emails explaining. Uh, I just, anyways, first and foremost, I hope he's okay. That's number one. Yeah. Then everything else, who cares? It happens. Shit happens. So we're still talking about rap right now. Let me give you uh, the top five right now out there. And I know you BJJ guys. Come on, some of you gotta like rap, so you'll enjoy the top five that I like uh, right now. Yellow Wolf came out with a new song called Hold On. I enjoy it. It sounds like the Yellow Wolf I know. And if you guys are fans of Yellow Wolf, you like that trunk music, we like that shit. So Hold On has a, like the way Yellow Wolf should sound. Good feel. Uh, there's a song right now called uh, F and Problems. ASAP Rocky, I think, sings it. You ever hear it? No. <sighs> Catchy. Drake started from the bottom yeah that that song is an anthem you understand you know the difference between a song and an anthem no what is the difference between an anthem changes the way the song feels it's larger than anything it's an anthem it's just large it's something you you sing this hook you sing it and With such pride yeah that's it man you get up and you sing it like literally, I started from the bottom and we're here. My whole fucking team. Like we're right here. And you and me, man, we started from the bottom. Now look at us. Look at us, Erica. We started from the bottom. <laughs> People are ditching us. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, but like, yeah, it's a song you just sing and you feel like, man, we did it. And right. you didn't even do shit. You know, you just, you, you feel what this person's saying. Yeah. So, and, I, and I, I'm not even a Drake fan. Pusha T, he uh, has a song called Millions right now. Huge. It's awesome. Millions. Man. And last one for you people listening. Number five will be Rick Ross. It's called Pirates. And uh, I like anything Rick Ross puts out. So, what the hell? Yeah. That's my Rick Ross grant. Just now. Yeah. That's odd. Hmm. Weird. It's almost like we're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> so, moving on. Should we just call up the homeboy and hope he answers 10 minutes early? Sure, let's do it. All right, let's call up uh, Mr. Zach Adamson. Let's get this uh, Party. show back on the road with BJJ. I apologize if people aren't rap fans, but I love it. Yeah. We, should, we should have our own rap radio show. It's going to be called Wrap rap It Up. <laughs> rap Addict. <laughs> Someone just stole that fucking name, probably. In Domain. I'm quitting the show. Surprise! <laughs> Alright, we'll have to try it back in a bit. Speaking of uh, episodes, we just released yesterday uh, a lost episode of ours, Emily Kwok. Yeah. Are you Emily Kwok fan? I am actually. She's, I like uh, she's ridiculously good. Cause uh, she's like more of a little people. Uh, like her moves aren't strength based. Yeah. Have you ever got the chance to watch uh, how to defeat a bigger opponent? I have with casting. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think of that? Oh, it's. Uh, I got a lot of stuff off of it. Cause I mean, you know. You smaller. Yeah, I'm a small guy, and I have to. I don't like using strength either. So you know, I like to be very technical. Yeah, she talks about the 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 DVD, and I believe now she has our same another one out with Novi, uh, with Stefan Casting, yeah. and Matt. You gotta just go out there, guys. Listen to uh, the Emily Kwok Lost interview. It was done over the uh, holidays, and uh, yeah, we just put it out now. It's got a great response from what I hear. People are really enjoying it, so uh, go tune in, listen to that. Uh, if you don't know who Emily Kwok is, it's a great time to learn about her. She's one of the I think she's 
men in a handful of girls who's famous in BJJ in my mind. Yeah. Like really famous. I think she's done a lot of great things. She yeah. she promotes the sport as a female to females more than almost anyone. Yeah. Yeah, so huge yeah. fan of hers. And she's a, a Marcelo Garcia, I guess. Speaking of that, holy shit, I saw her in the picture. Did you see the picture of the, the re-grand opening? Oh, man. So they had they had Ricardo Labori out there. Uh, Jacare. Yes, Calvacante, the, the leader of Alliance. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Marcelo, Emily Kwok, Dan Covell, our boy, um, uh, you know, Paul Schreiner was there. The whole list of, of yeah. black belts, like promoted a black belt there too. Oh, did he? Yeah. Wow. I can't remember his name. I think it's like Russian or yeah, some weird. But, Amazing. Um, like uh, you got promoted, and your hands were from those guys to get a black belt from Marcelo. Like, I don't know if I told you, but if I were to get a black belt from anybody, yeah, uh, it'd probably be Marcelo Garcia. That'd be your ultimate? My ultimate, yeah. Man, do you know what the pressure would be accepting that belt? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I don't it'd know. be pretty cool. Like, I mean, Either you sell or crumble. If you're in a competitor aspect. If you don't compete, then who cares? Yeah, for sure. But if you're out there with that patch on your back and, and you got it from him... You know, yeah. there's an and I'm sure he knows that there's an extra little bit that like, you can't let him down. And I don't think like I mean he's like I was I was telling uh, I was telling you about that girl from uh, from Marcelo Garcia's academy. Uh, I can't remember her name, but she won the, the Abu Dhabi. She's a Marcelo Garcia. You know, like yeah. they're popping up now. Well, right, they didn't have the time to produce people till now. It's been a couple of years, yeah. so yeah, they're all popping up at like purple brown level. And, yeah, they're murking it. That's oh, what Mar- Marcelo Garcia's new gym. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, I don't like. I'm not feeling like I like the Mendez brothers style with a uh, all oh, white. That, yeah, but I, I saw Marcelo's pictures. Man, I, I don't like the white wall. Yeah, pad. I like it. Yeah, I like, think you you like anything. You'd be pissed on the wall in an alley, and they rolled around in the alley. I'd be like, a- oh my god. I turn into the old guy from Eight Crazy Nights, the Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. So I don't know. No, I like the I like the Mendez uh, gym too. Like I just like the the look of purity. You know, like you want to learn jujitsu? Come into my white dojo. I don't know, man. I'd just be so scared. Like it's too clean for me. Name me one place that you would love to train at right now. One place, uh, only one place. Out of looks, like aesthetically, or like literally, Just I want to train anything. One gym. <sighs> it's too hard. I, I can't think. I'm drawing blanks right now. Mine is Ameridote. <laughs> is it really? Why not? It's a good looking gym. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if they're the greatest teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Teacher, yeah. there's only one. There's yeah. One. Guys, about uh, an eleventh degree black belt. Name yeah. another martial art. Jiu Jitsu. Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> you guys should check them out if you're ever bored. Uh, look up uh, what is it? So you have to type in. Everyone knows that right now. Enter the dojo. That's it. Some that made me laugh so damn hard. <laughs> you know, like it started off strong. Like the concept, but the the more episodes come out, it waters it down. It's not as funny. Come here, this is Zach. What's up, man? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry, we thought that was your message. <laughs> sorry about that. What's going on, guys? Nothing. So we uh, we saved it for yourself. How about we start off with you breaking uh, the big news? Uh, you, you want me to you want me to explain? Or you guys yeah, want? yeah, let it out. Uh, right on, guys! I'm super excited. Got, um, you know, I was the first person to be invited to the the BJJ Kumite the next the next season or the next you know episodes or whatnot. So you know, it's a huge deal. I'm, I'm super excited. Um, I, you know, of course, they put on some names at first. That you know, like uh, the Meow Brothers would be there. Um, Gianni got invited, so there's going to be you know, like some of the best guys in the world there. And, 
man, it's just a huge honor, and I'm so excited. And I feel like I got all these people behind me, and the training's going good, man. The training's going really good. So I'm very, very excited, guys. It's going to be cool. Con congratulations, uh, first and foremost. Thanks. That's what I want to tell you. And uh, it, it's crazy that they started announcing people already. I thought it would take a lot longer of a process. Uh, <laughs> He hypes it up, dude. He like slowly trickles it out, you know, keeps everybody hungry for, for more information. Oh, absolutely. Um, now that you have this in your head uh, already, ha ha have you noticed a change in your mindset and uh, the way your training's uh, going? Yeah, definitely the mindset, you know, approaching the... Um, it's cool. I think I think it's always cool when you you know kind of decide as a competitor what tournaments you're going to do that year, and you make the mental commitment to yourself. And once you've made the me mental commitment to yourself, then you can start kind of building up uh, what my coach Professor Lovato calls like a superhero uh, like identity man, where you're picturing all these awesome things happening at the event. You're getting hyped up. You're getting excited. You know where before. If you're kind of on the ropes, whether you're going to do something that year, it's hard to get really pumped up. But once you're committed, man, you want to go and do good. So I'm trying to just put all those good positive thoughts in my head and um, get get all my my team behind me, my coaches, my sponsors, my family, and uh, that's just feeding my my fire to to train as hard as I possibly can. Of course, being smart, but you know, just getting after it, making sure it's going to be the best experience it possibly could be. Now that you know that you're doing the Kumite, are you going to go uh, out of your way to perhaps bring in some other training partners? Do you go somewhere else or do you just keep it home base like you uh, always have? Um, I'm definitely, you know, gonna, I'm heading out to train for Pan Ams uh, with uh, Team Lovato out in Oklahoma City. And he has a good, you know, super, super strong team out there. A lot of good guys and you know, I have luckily good training partners with my brother and my students here at home. And I have, you know, really good relations with a lot of people here in the Northwest. So I'll be putting together, yeah, like kind of some camps. They haven't released the, the date yet for the next Kumite. So I don't really, you know, I haven't, I'm just kind of focused on Pan Am right now. And then once they release the date, then I'll really like structure out the exact conditioning schedule leading up to it, training schedule with, traveling and everything and make sure everything's just dialed in really good but definitely guys definitely going to be hunting down good training partners a lot of good little guys and um it's cool too because it's gi and no gi so i think that offers a certain element to it that uh allows the training to be more fun too you know what i mean guys oh absolutely doing both opposed to just focusing on one i, I agree uh like now that the kumite has already been released and you know you're 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 about to do twenty one matches before the semis. Uh, you know both gi no gi could go for an hour, and you still got to fight another couple matches that day. Uh, do you think you'll have an edge now that you guys? It won't be such a shock like it was to the the first uh, group. Well, we don't know for sure. You know, like I, one of my good friends, Dar O'Connell. He fought on the first season, and you know we're, we're, we've been close before. He also trains a lot with Team Lovato, and uh, he's out there from Ireland. So you know he kind of filled me in on how the tournament works, you know, from his experience. And it doesn't sound like they they might not do the same format for the next season. They might change things up a lot. So I think that's part of the fun too. Is we're just gonna have to see what happens as far as how he he structures the event and how the fights work out. If he does the same style, maybe he does elimination rounds where people get knocked out. So I think it's going to be um, pretty cool to see what happens. I'm super excited to, to get information. So I, I, I'm just training the best I can and expecting, you know, to train for the, the, <laughs> the craziest scenario possible. Like you guys said, tons of fights, and I heard how brutal it was. Um, so definitely building the training around that for sure, guys. As the names roll out in the, the Kumite, do you find that you're probably going to try to, uh, you know, kind of game plan and strategize on what you're going to do with certain uh, competitors? Or are you just going to go in there and see, you know, let, let it flow? Well, I think the style, I mean, that's a crazy thing, guys. Think about it. The guys come out to you, 
You know, they can take your, they can pass your yard, they can sweep you all day, but if they're not submitting you, you know, it doesn't really <clears throat> make any difference. And I heard some interesting things about how the tournament unfolded, and I think the guys really got to train to, like, and really want to submit the guys with whatever, um, you know, whether it's something a little unorthodox or it's, you know, just the bread and butter, but really getting down to it. And I heard a lot of the guys that were doing well were the guys who had their submission game was sharp, you know, and it's, I think it's interesting to see who does well. It's going to be the guys who do fight for the finish, which I think is pretty cool. You know, I think that that adds another um, interesting way in the mind of the competitor how to train for it. You know, that you have to be really gunning to have good submission defense and be, even in your training, just attacking, attacking, attacking. So I think for everybody involved in the event, man, that game is just going to get so much better. You know, that's what I've already seen for the, from the guys I've talked to and, you know, my training myself. It's going to be cool. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, I guess a more of a personal question uh, in terms of how to train. Uh, do you train, like, when you're rolling with uh, with uh, students or yourself, do you find that you're always working on your strengths as opposed to, you know, some of your, let's say, defense or uh, stuff like that? I'm always training whatever I messed up on at the last last tournaments, guys. So whatever I like, whatever holes I've been making, you know, that's what I'm I'm training always. So I'm trying to make my my bad side, my good side. You know, I'm trying to recognize certain people's movement patterns. Um, you know, I'm kind of already watching, of course, a lot of the black belts because I know I'm going to be fighting black belts soon. So I'm always just trying to watch and see where my game is lacking and where the high level guys are beating people, and then I'm trying to add that into my my game because if I'm always trying to like see those little trends you know I'm trying to take like the guesswork out of it and just break it down to exactly what's working at a high level and that way I feel like I'm not wasting my time you know I feel like I'm getting the most on my training. How, how important is it nowadays uh, especially on the sports side and especially uh, to the competitors and people competing uh, how important is it nowadays to to put that extra energy off the mats and, and break down film and, you know, is, is it important? Dude, I swear you gotta like, it's like the love hate relationship, man, you know, cause you have to be, you have to be dedicated a hundred percent. I think, especially with, you know, my brother, he, he loves to like, man, he'll train forever, but you try and get him to watch film and you know, he's just not really into it. So I, on the other hand, Man, I'm, I'm, I'll watch that stuff all day, you know, I'll just hang out, watch videos, I'll, uh, I'm just all about it, so I try and add that as, like, one other extra piece to the training, like, maybe you do only a little bit of conditioning, you know, make sure you get the drills in, a lot of good training with the people your weight, but adding in that little extra bit of, you know, analyzing the competition, knowing what to be expecting, um, again, seeing what the other people are doing that you're going to fight, you're kind of setting yourself up to do to you know have more more strategy more tactics on your on your end so you know what to expect when you go in and I want to I want to win of course so I'm trying to stack all the, all the odds in my favor you know that way I feel I'm prepared the best way I can be and a lot of that all this stuff man this mainly comes from my coach too you know Professor Lovato he passes down all the stuff that's worked good for him and he never had a black belt you know in his school either so we're trying to follow pretty much the same, same blueprint, and it's been working really good. So we're, you know, really embracing it and really grateful for that. Speaking of your professor, uh, I think he got released today or yesterday. Uh, his roles, there's two of them with uh, Marcelo Garcia, and that was some entertaining uh, 18 minutes of footage. Do you happen to see this? Part one, but man. The guys are sick, you know, and I think it's cool, too, because for a while, you know, Lovato, when he first fought Marcelo, he was so new as a black belt, and he was really young, so I think he was like 19 or 18. Marcelo was already pretty established, so, you know, he lost in that super fight they had, but to see them train now together, it's like, man, his game has evolved so much, and he's right up there with the best in the world and solidifying his spot, and, man, it was awesome. What did you, I mean, those battles are crazy, right, guys? I mean, shit, it, guys are it, it was awesome to watch as just a, 
you, you know you start feeling like a nerd when you get excited and over like the the mm-hmm. little shifts of weight, but they're so great at bouncing. But you see like maybe something crazy might happen sometimes. Like it, I really enjoyed watching it. Um, with with that being said, you talk about well, watching footage and and at what level do you think? Because you're a brown belt, you've been in the game a while. Do you think white belts and blue belts are they capable of watching film and breaking it down and understanding really what's going on? Do you, do you think that uh, it's took you a couple of years to actually know what you're looking for and, and what's uh, the new move yeah. that's going on and stuff like that? I mean, <laughs> it's crazy how much access to information there is now for the blue belts compared to when I started, man. You know, I feel like I was trained like in the stone age when I look back. Now the guys have everything out there for them, all the tournaments, all the footage. I mean, there was even like YouTube when I was a blue belt, man. So now, you know, I think they have all these tournament matches out there for them. And the cool thing is, too, is at first at blue belt, yeah, they understand some stuff. Purple, they understand more. You know, now at brown, starting to really start to see a lot of it. And then, man, think about like when Lovato watches that stuff, you know, like he can break it down to the most minute little crazy details. So I think that's part of the fun, too, is your own um, jujitsu IQ goes up over time and that's one way that you can kind of be able to track and see how you've improved which is always a struggle for everybody man how, how much do you how can you track how much you improve one year to the next you know it's really hard um, but little stuff like that can help i think for sure as a brown belt do you do you uh, still look at uh youtube or dvds as a source of knowledge or uh yeah yeah, I mean, I think it's everybody I talk to, they always are trying to, like, piece stuff together. You know, you're, you're playing with something, but somebody does something slightly different. So you kind of want to be just keeping your mind open to everything. And even if I'm not good at it, I want to see what's going on with it. I want to play with it, see if it's if it works into my game. And, yeah, I mean, I think it's not bad. And and it's just good to know what's what's out there, too, man. There's so much stuff. Um, but shit, man, you always get caught every once in a while on something you weren't expecting. So I think kind of staying on top of the game <laughs> keeps you, uh, you know, it's kind of a little more ready for everything. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um, I was at a Ryan Hall seminar uh, lately, and uh, he kind of like got a couple of us all like confused and like not not shocked, but like I never heard anyone say uh, what he said. I'm about to say it, and I want your take on it. Uh, I posted on Facebook and it's getting a lot of buzz. So I want to know your take. Do you think uh, BJJ is anything like chess? Ryan Hall said, absolutely ridiculous. It has nothing in common. Hmm. Man, it's funny. When I was in grade school, I was like on the chess team. and Like we'd go to tournaments in Portland, battle. And man, we did like speed chess where it was, like, you make a move, bam, you got to hit the clock. Next guy gets to make a move, bam, hit the clock. And people have, like, strategies at that place, man. Like, some guys would be trying to talk to you during the tournament, trying to fake you out. Some guys would be, like, hitting their moves as quick as possible. Um, and, of course, if you're competitive, you want to win. So I think some things carry over no matter what the competitive sport or activity is, you know. But as far as, like, having to use your a strategy, think under pressure, um, if it's for time, that adds another element. Uh, you know, the physical part is the only thing that I think that's that's maybe missing, you know. But definitely, like, the the mindset, man, the strategy is, like, that's one of the best parts about jiu-jitsu. Those are the good guys, you know, who's ever, like, of course, like, the strategy guy. And then you have the beast who are just mauling everybody. But I think they, I think they go together. But not maybe not, like, on the, the physical level, you know. I, I agree. I, I, I like that answer. Uh, yeah, someone wrote a funny comment. I laughed my ass off talking about, I don't know one chess player that has two blown out knees. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear that. That's all my, all my, a lot of my close friends have had injuries right now too. So, yeah, you know, it's like, if it's just a mental battle. I think that's the biggest thing. Everybody in the sport who's done well, they had to have their mental game blown. So I think that if you're a chess player, it's still high, 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 like a heightened sense of awareness, you know? Yeah. Well, 
since you're on the chess team and and you know all the pieces and stuff, if I was one of the chess pieces on the board, I would describe myself as a pawn. Uh, what what are you? <laughs> oh shit. Um, man, I would say like the man. I gotta. I'm not even gonna bullshit on the queen, man. I gotta be the queen, versatile. Can be trying to hit everything. You know, that's that's the Vato's style too. Is like he can play all the guards, man. You know, he can play all the guards well. He knows like a lot of positions from everything, and it makes him a little more unpredictable and. That's the queen, man. You know, they can do everything. They can move everywhere, and it's unpredictable. So, I, I hope that somehow becomes your nickname in life. Like, you go into tournaments, and people are like, oh, shit, the queen's here. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah, so um, you're talking about training for the, the Pan Ams. Uh, do, do you think there's any added pressure to yourself now that people uh, know you're in a kumite and they see you in their brackets? Uh, do you feel that added pressure that people want to prove that they belong there and, and not you or uh, one of those circumstances? I don't know, man. You know, I guess anything where there's an invite, you know, and there wasn't like a trials leading up to it, people are going to be like, oh, it's a popularity contest or, you know, some bullshit like that. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, the guys, who who doesn't want to fight the best guys, you know? So I think, I I think anybody who's a, who considers them an active competitor is gonna to want to fight the best people, and that's what I want too, man. So you know, whoever is gonna be good and hunt teams for the good fights, then they know they know if we fight them, they're gonna get a hundred percent. So I think it's gonna be it's gonna be good, and man, there's that's what you eventually that's what you have to want. You have to be the guy that is gonna be at the top that everybody's trying to knock down. But I think eventually you get comfortable kind of with that feeling, and, and that's what we have been fighting for forever. So I'm just excited. You know? Direct <laughs> quote from the queen. Yes. Excited. Um, do you dabble in any other activities uh, to help improve your, your jiu-jitsu? Other activities? Uh, I mean, like, I only do, like, conditioning once a week, you know, Olympic lifting, Stuff like that. I do swim. I've had a, I've had my own handful of injuries, so you know I like swimming on the side if I have an injury. But to help my jujitsu, you know, not too much, man. Like same thing. Like read a lot of books. You know, try and keep my mind sharp on on the mental game. And no, uh, just. Man, it can't be all jujitsu, you know. It has to still be time for like hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your girlfriend or whoever, whoever that you know, something like that. It has I to fish. be time for other stuff, you know, because if you, it doesn't matter how much you love it, you know, even if you're living on the mats, training 20 hours, you still if you never get a break, eventually it becomes like more like work. And I because I work at the academy all the time too. My my time away from jujitsu is. Special, so I just try and use it, trying to recoup, get my energy back, you know, make sure I'm coming excited and hungry for the next sessions, and really trying to make the most of the next few years for competition, and and then I'll kind of pass the torch, still compete, but really focus on the coach, um, coaching roles as well, and coaching my young teenagers and the next the next group that's going to be coming up, you know. Uh, I have a question for you here. There are different body types in jujitsu. Like uh, some are more flexible than others. Uh, like, do you have to necessarily be able to do the splits in order to be a good grappler, or is that something that's not really necessary? Man, no, I don't think you have to be too flexible. You know, I mean, I think uh, in featherweight division, um, my division's got to be like the most controversial division right now because. Some people like the Meow Brothers, some people don't. Everybody's super flexible. You know, I'm not like a real flexible guy, but, you know, even me, I can... There's just little guys are just wiry, you know? So we see all the big guys doing all the positions the, the small guys are doing now, too. So it does make a difference, especially if your feet are flexible. I think that offers you a certain amount of, like, you don't have to be too worried about the foot lock. You know, some people have a body type that allows them to 
you know, just be like double jointed elbows so they don't have to worry about the arm lock as much or, you know, like I said, flexible foot so they're not really worried about the, the ankle lock. Anything like that can be can be an advantage and something you build around your game. You know, like seeing people who are at a lower level beat a guy who is only a, only a foot lock guy. You know, the guy killed everyone with foot locks but then he came against a guy who, you know, was just a purple belt. Um obviously good but had a flexible foot couldn't get submitted and ended up winning the match so I think that that can play into your into your favor but watching the featherweights man god the little guy's got to be ready for the flexibility you know having to get so small and smash inside it's crazy man crazy is that something uh, a person acquires being that flexible and wiry or is it uh, you know you're born with it kind of thing some people work on it, you know, I think some people do yoga, some people um, work actually trying to improve their flexibility. Flexibility is important, you know, I think anybody who's like a complete athlete should have a good amount of flexibility so you're not, so you're going to avoid injury, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, man, some people, I passed people's guard to the side control one time, had the guy grab his ankle and like put it in front of me, like from a deep side control, man, like that sort of flexibility, I don't think you can develop that, that's like contortionist or something you know so that's yeah it helped him he helped him escape the side control but at the end of the day is eventually some guy gonna stack him or maybe hurt his knee maybe you know so i think it's like the double-edged double-edged sword and i don't want to rely on anything just don't like a strong guy doesn't want to, have to always rely on his, his strength because eventually it's probably gonna fail him you know yeah you just i want to just touch on uh, your personal thoughts on the meow brothers since uh there is some you know smack talk about uh, them going on or Gianno Grippo style or whoever's playing the a lot of the beer and bolo and modern uh, what, What's your take on on their direction of uh, the way they fight their matches? I like anybody who's style that's forward pressing man So anybody who tries to whether it's pull sweep pass submit, you know pull take the back submit, you know take the guy down, smash his guards, submit him. As long as they're forward pressing, then I like it. You know, as soon as it gets stalled out, nobody wants to watch that, man. You know, it's like in Indian leg wrestling. That's not the sort of thing. As a jiu-jitsu pra practitioner, you know, of course, all of us like, have friends that don't do jiu-jitsu. And then they ask, they want to see a match, and you show them some of the fights that are out there sometimes. It's like, man, it's so ugly. You know, it's, yes, it can be a strategic battle for a small grip or a small position, but it's, I don't feel like at that point, neither guy is really trying to push forward, you know? And if somebody's not pushing forward, then where's the fight at, you know? The guy should be trying, it's a short time, it's eight minutes isn't that long, you know? The guy should be trying to smash the guard, you know, jump on his back, sweep, 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 you know? So I see some matches that are awesome, and then I see some that are, you know, it's just all right. So that's kind of my take on it, guys. As long as the guys are really trying to attack with it, I did see them in, um, trying to pass the guard in San Francisco, which I thought was pretty cool. You know, I like I like seeing the small guys who try and pass, especially if they play the guard too. So, I sh I'm sure we'll see them try to pass this year, because everybody knows at black belt you have to have a full, you know, you have to be able to pass and and have a bottom a bottom game. So, probably just like yeah. the evolution there, man. Yeah. For sure. And uh, for the people listening. Uh, can you just explain the actual weight for Feather if they're uh, confused? Yeah, it's 154 with the Gion, 154 pounds. What What would be your uh, walking weight then? Um, about 158. So I just kind of eat pretty light and uh, have a lightweight gi and usually make weight pretty pretty easy. I have a low body fat. I'm a little bit more of the taller, longer guys in the division. Um, but I can make the weight pretty easy now. I've, I've got pretty... I have it pretty much down to a science now, so it took a few years, but I never wrestled, so I didn't have any experience cutting weight, but I have a lot of good coaches, and they, they help me with a lot of that stuff now, too, so it's a lot easier. Nice. And, and is there anything uh, particular that you hope to get out of uh, the Kumite? Like, do you ever crave more attention or uh, fame, like, say, uh, you know, Rafael Lovato, uh, your coach, I mean, he, he's a heavyweight in the game. Like, he's got a name. Uh, you know, you can't name that many people, like, off the tip of your tongue. So his name always pops up in my 
you know, quick naming people. So do, do you want something like that? Or are you hoping to get uh, maximum exposure? Or are you ever looking to do your own DVD series? Like, is there a lot of stuff coming up for you that you're hoping uh, that this pushes the envelope? Definitely, guys. You know, I, I love jiu-jitsu so much, you know, and I think that anybody who dedicates their life to something, you know, and they, they do everything, you know, everything is about the love um, for jiu-jitsu for me. So I'm putting all my extra time into it, all the traveling, all the hunting down the good information, working with the you know, world-class people, bringing world-class people in. And that's all for a reason. And I think a lot of people respect that. So when you're, you know, hungry and trying to climb to the top of a field, People want to be around people like that, you know, just like I do, just like I'm trying to bring good people in. So definitely I hope that um, the hard work pays off and that it will open up opportunities for, like I said, go share my knowledge, whether it be through seminars or, um, you know, developing some video series or, you know, just being, um, again, a contributing person to jiu-jitsu, man. That's my, my main thing. And I think people, you know, are, are liking what my brother and I are doing right now, you know, the Pacific Northwest, there's never been like a big jiu-jitsu name out of the Pacific Northwest. And it was always my goal to try and get some hype around this area, man. we got to rep our, rep our region out here. And uh, there is some tough guys coming out of this area. So, yeah, man, I want to be an ambassador for my region and, and try and blow it up and get as much um, hype around us so that we can have the opportunity later to, to get good invites for my students and um, – just blow and this whole thing up, man. It's the plan. I hope I hope all that happens for you. I heard a rumor. And I just want you What's to up? confirm or deny it. I heard you actually got selected to the Kumite because you were on BJJ Attic Radio previously. <laughs> Shit, man. How sick would that be, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I, I do really appreciate the, uh, the support, though, so much. You know, this last year, everything's really come together for us, and it's um, people respect you guys' opinion. They like what you guys are doing. So thank you for helping us get the word out there. Really uh, thank it. you. You know what? We we say we're not biased or like have favorites, but uh, that's that's bullshit, man. We we like you and your brother a lot more than a lot of people, and uh, we like Marcos <laughs> Terra Grosso. We we can we, we can accept that. <laughs> yeah, we try we try not to be biased, but it, it's hard not to. <laughs> no, but yeah, I really do enjoy the 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 videos. Uh, you and your brother put out i watched one a lot of times and it was all the entries and and uh back takes it, it was phenomenal man it, it was off the hook cool guys man if you guys are ever in the pacific northwest you know like i said we're really trying to build a a, a, a big school out here man we're in a town of like seven thousand people we're right on the coast it's a unique environment there's good guys to train with so please guys let us know when you want to come out we got a beach house we'll put you up we'll take great care of you um, I promise it'll be fun. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see what the prices are on Expedia. We'll party. Let's do it. <laughs> right on, guys. Um, looking now, uh, you know, you're so involved in jiu-jitsu. If it wasn't for jiu-jitsu, uh, what do you see yourself doing right now? <laughs> oh, man. Like, oh. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Um, man, I don't know. To be honest, guys. Me neither. I, I, I mean, that's what everybody says, you know, because my goal, I always wanted to be able to travel, have freedom to work when I want, when I want, freedom to, you know, work around my own schedule, um, network, meet people who are inspirational and super hungry to succeed. And, and she just is the best. You know, I'm sure it's it's probably similar with anything else where there's a lot of really hungry, you know, passionate people out there, but I don't see anything else, you know. I do believe at a certain point, it's like, man, every, the way everything came together for me and my brother, it's like, it wasn't, it, was, it had to be this way because I don't think, like, there was any other plan for us, guys, you know. <laughs> I like that. You, your plan B was plan A. Yeah, there's not. <laughs> We're burning the boat behind us. <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, b before we let you go, I want you to just uh, give a shout out to your uh, your sponsors, whoever's been helping you out. Uh, you know, maybe uh, you know how they can get in contact with you, Twitter, website. You know, maybe people want to book you for a seminar. 
Uh, just let out a lot of your information now so uh, people know what's up. Sweet, guys. Well, uh, first of all, my sponsors, my main sponsors are Oats. Uh, they're located out of the Pacific Northwest. we got 1914 kimonos out of Oklahoma City. Um, Gee Soap off the East Coast. Um, I also have a lot of support from uh, Lapel Show, Gracie Mag. Uh, let's see, you can follow us on Twitter at ORBJJ. Um, they can find us on Facebook at BJJ Seaside. Adamson Jiu Jitsu, if they want to check out our videos on YouTube. And if anybody ever wants to come train with the Adamson Bros, we're out here in uh, Seaside, Oregon. You know, we're right on the coast, um, very beautiful area. And we have an open door policy, and we love it when guys can see it. So keep in touch, guys. We, we love the support, and uh, we're hungry to try and do big things for Jiu Jitsu. Nice, nice. That was. This is uh, all the time we got. I just want to say thanks for uh, doing the show again. Uh, good luck at the uh, Pan Ams. And uh, you know what? I think you might be the we'll, – we'll make sure you you come back on and we'll, we'll talk about your Kumite experience. Awesome, guys. It's going to be it's gonna be huge. I'm going to be bringing everything I got. So thanks for the support. <laughs> support. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man. I, I think we're going to make uh, Zach the Queen Adamson T-shirts. <laughs> Man, it's gotta be like outlandish, you know, like over the top. Oh, we got know. uh, yeah. we got some humor, <laughs> we'll think of something. All right, man, good luck and uh, thanks again. All right, boys, peace out. Thank right, you, bye bye. What a cool dude. <laughs> you know what's the best? What actually hearing what the hell he's saying to our answers. Yeah. You remember last time we had a, a huge meltdown twice? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that brown belt episode, and everything was falling apart. Marcos was one of them too. Oh my god! And uh, like Thomas Beach, I felt so bad for everyone. Uh, you know, uh, man, it was, it was a rough, rough day for us. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to hear him back on. Eventually, you know, we're we're actually trying, folks. That's breaking news too. If you guys are fans of uh, those upcoming episodes, we're trying to reach out to a couple key players and. And just give them a full fucking episode or yeah. a double feature. Like, none of this six people, like, they deserve to get time to talk to. So some of the people that we messed up on the, the interviews, we're going to try to get them back and uh, give, them a, give them a little more time. They deserve it. Yeah. So <laughs> if that's if they're uh, willing to talk to us. So that would be good. All right, guys. Uh, I don't know if you can tell them. I'm, I'm starting my energy levels low. I need to eat. So yes. I'm going to wrap this up. Yes. I'm going to wrap this up. Kisses and hugs. And hugs and kisses. I love kisses. That's it, man. Not one damn person sent, sent us a hang tight picture. Yeah, you guys, honestly, man, come on. <laughs> I'll deactivate my Facebook if you guys, like, don't send anything to BG Jatic Radio. Yeah, man. Go follow us, by the way. Thank you very much. Enjoy this episode, and uh, this is why I'm hot. And uh, train proper jujitsu. Oh, and remember to uh, spay and neuter your pets. Um, that's all. That's how I'm ending the episodes for now on. Mine's a girl. I have a dog. I have a dog. Uh, female. Nice. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, yeah. Send photos, please. <laughs> really. Hang tight, dudes. Hang tight. Yeah. <laughs>